Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy United Animated Universe Deluxe Class Bumblebee. Let me know think of this figure in the comment section down below. Is it a pickup or a pass? Now let's take a look at the figure's packaging. So here we have the packaging, we have Transformers on the side, we have the Legacy United logo at the bottom of the box with Animated Universe Bumblebee in white text with a white out of a symbol. We also do have a really cool image or arc shot of Bumblebee in his police car alt mode with his awesome rocket boosters and an open way on displaying the figure in the packaging. And if you do look at the top of the box, we have another Legacy United logo there as well. And as for the side of the packaging, we have two really cool images or artwork shots of Bumblebee in his robot mode, one more of a close-up of his head and chest, and one more of a wide shot with Bumblebee in an action pose with his weapons or accessories. And if we do look at the back of the box, the figure transforms in at 22 steps. There's a product shot of him and his robot, his all mode, and the Transformers 40th Anniversary logo. And as for the final side of the packaging, we have half of the Legacy United artwork. So if you do get another deluxe from this Legacy United line, you can put both boxes together and complete the artwork. And that is pretty much it for the packaging. So let's now get into the review. So here we have Bumblebee in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very top with a head sculpt. I do like the bright yellow for the entire helmet section of the head, with the really nice silver for the face, the blue for the eyes. Then I sculpted in horns at the top of the head, a very classic, iconic detail and trait of Bumblebee. And I do like the nice black outlaying on the face as well, with that really nice kid-like smirk sculpted in on the face as well. Now taking a look at the chest, I do like that classic Autobot symbol done in red with the really nice black striping and smoky gray clear plastic on the chest as well and i do like the small little details like the mirror from the car i think that's pretty cool how details from both modes sort of cross over and carry over for each mode now taking a look at the shoulder again to like that really nice kind of orangish yellow mixture for the base color of bumblebee with a really nice pinned wheels i actually do like to see that on a deluxe class figure mostly comes into play for the car mode but still pretty cool to see here i do like that bright silver and black for the wheel i actually do like how the forearm guards are actually kind of formed out of the door doors and the sides of the car as you can see there's actually the doorknob there we do have some nice black for the hands and there's some more yellow and black for the top of the legs and the crotch and there is some more black striping on one side of the leg i actually uh, do quite like that sort of mismatched design in the appearance and there's some more wheels on the sides of the legs as well i'm pretty sure these are mushroom peg the only ones that are pinned are actually at the shoulders or the back wheels for the alt mode and now taking a look at that side profile there overall not too bad but i do have one complaint that I will mention in just a sec but as far as you know how compact the figure is it's actually really well done there's a bit of a backpack we actually do have the bumper section of the car there but it's actually pretty well tabbed into place and it's not really that ugly and of course taking a look at the actual back of the figure there's very little kibble there's very few hollow gaps and spaces but on that subject there is actually one hollow space it's not actually where the back of the figure is but it's actually at the top there's this huge hollow space here which I'm not that big a fan of I think it would have been better if they could have compacted the backpack and actually kind of pushed it more towards the chest because it actually can somewhat move but it never wants to stay so it kind of makes me question if this was originally supposed to be a bit more closed a bit more filled in but how they built the figure it just didn't work out because you actually can somewhat make it a bit closer to the chest so it somewhat looks like it was supposed to do that so that is a pretty bad hollow or empty gap there and truth be told, when I first got this figure in hand, I thought mine was a defective copy. I had no idea about this problem when I purchased the figure. No one ever really mentioned in the review, so I really thought I should mention it in mine. Maybe some people who are watching right now had no idea about this, because I didn't when I first bought this figure. But that's really my only major complaint, you know, appearance-wise. Again, the back looks very clean, very few hollow gaps or kibble or anything. Really just the top, they could have done a lot better. But as for the articulation, the head can look up and down. Down, it can tilt side to side, look left and right. The arms can move out and in, forward and back. There is a bicep rotation. There's also an elbow bend to a very good degree. And there is a wrist rotation, which I'm actually pretty surprised because if you actually do see the transformation in just a sec a little later in the review, you actually do fold in the hands. And typically on a deluxe, I would say it's about 50% of the time when they do that, when you do fold the hand inside the form, usually it does not also have a wrist rotation. But this 
this figure does. That being said, mine's actually very tight, so when you do first get this figure in hand, don't be, you know, scared to use a bit of force, because mine are pretty tight, so it does require a quite a bit of force to use those wrist rotations, but there is also a waist rotation all the way around, completely unhindered to a very good degree. The legs can kick forward, they can also kick back, and out to the side, there is rotation at the top of the leg, there is a knee bend to a very good degree, past 90, I think that looks really good, and that is not due to transformation, usually people would think, of course, it goes past 90, because maybe you fold the leg up, but you do not do that for the transformation, that's just solely for posability, which is really good to see on this figure, and of course, there is an ankle pivot, which I think could be a little bit better, it's a very slight rock, which is unfortunate, um, it is a deluxe, so of course, my expectations aren't as high as if it was like a Voyager or a Leader, but I think really an ankle pivot should be kind of like a common thing for a deluxe. That's my opinion. But let me just quickly straighten up the figure. Overall, posability and the tolerances are really good. Just my main two complaints are that gap where the back of the head is, and the ankle pivot could be a little bit better. But that is pretty much it for articulation. So as for accessories, Bumblebee includes two rocket pieces and two stinger pieces, which can attach onto the figure in several different ways. One of the ways being is you can actually grab one rocket piece and one stinger piece to actually form this really cool blaster. And since the figure comes with two identical stinger pieces and two rocket pieces, you can actually form two of these weapons to have the figure dual wield them. So I'm really just going to show it on one right now because, of course, it looks the exact same way with the other one. But there is a port in the hand and there is a post on the weapon where accessory and that can just slide into place like so and I think that looks overall pretty cool and as for the next way you actually do not have to modify or transform the accessory or the figure in any way you just want to remove it from the hand and this option or feature actually does involve both blasters or rocket pieces so there is of course two ports and one post on each weapon or accessory and just grabbing in that identical one off from the side you can plug Plug that in on the other side of the back and there we have his really cool jet pack from the animated series and I actually have to say that looks really cool and if you do want to see what it looks like from the front on perspective you can somewhat see the rocket pieces they're a little bit hidden maybe it would have been nice if the rocket pieces were a bit bigger so they would be a bit more noticeable but if you actually do have the figure somewhat stand at an angle or to the side you can see a little bit more that way but as for the final way of storing the accessories that's actually all the ways you can store the rocket pieces that are actually shown in the instructions maybe there's a few hidden ways he actually does have a few mech tech ports on the sides of the legs and the arms you could probably come up with some secret ways but as far as the instructions go that's the only way you can store the rockets but as for the stingers you actually can separate them from the rocket pieces and store them one final way so you're just going to want to go to the back of the figure and just wiggle these off these rocket pieces and just put them off to the side for now and how these were attached is there is a post on the actual stinger piece and there is a port on the inside of the rocket and of course same for the other one just take that and put that off to the side and this option or feature actually does require a bit of modification or transformation of the figure itself so you're actually going to move the arm out rotate at the bicep you can then open up this panel that's on the form. You can then fold the hand inside and then just close it up just like that. And just kind of have the arm sort of out like a neutral position like so. And then you can repeat the exact same step and process on their side. So just rotate the bicep, open up the form. You can then fold the hand inside and just close it up like so. And again, just kind of have the arms just sort of angled out like so. And then, of course, you can just place the figure right there. Then what you can do is get both stinger pieces, or both halves, and there is a post on one half on the inside, and there is a corresponding port on the inside of the other one, and that will just align up and tab in place to form this huge stinger weapon. And as you can see, there is two posts here and ports pretty much where the hands used to be, and that will just plug into place like so and then you can recreate his iconic classic weapon from the animated series and sometimes it can be a bit wonky you do have to kind of fiddle with the figure a bit to actually have it look nice and straight but there is his final kind of feature or way to store his accessories let's now get down to some robot mode comparisons 
Starting off our comparisons here, we have the animated one we compare alongside the animated Optimus Prime. And I think these are two classic characters that look really good displayed side by side. And now for another comparison. Here he is with the animated deluxe class Prowl. And let me know in the comments what animated character would you like to see Hasbro bring into the Legacy United line next. And now for some other Legacy United comparisons. Here he is with the Deluxe Class Rescue Bot Chase. I think they look pretty cool side by side. And now for one final comparison. Here we have Animated Bumblebee displayed alongside my most recent review. That being the Cyberverse Windblade. And that is pretty much it for comparisons. Let's now get down to Transformation. So now for transformation, what you want to do is hinge the arms out like so. You can then rotate at the waist all the way around so the back of the legs are now facing towards you and the front of the legs are facing away from you. You can then go to the underneath of the foot. You can actually fold the heel spurs in like so. Then you can actually go to the back of the figure. As you can see, there's the backpack section here and now the front of the legs. You're actually going to open up these panels here. You can fold the little knee pad or knee panel inside. Do the same process with the other one. So fold that panel out, fold the knee pad inside. You can grab this entire leg panel on the side of the leg, rotate that entire section around, repeat the exact same step and process with the other one. Just rotate that entire section around. And how you know you did it properly is you're gonna to wanna to see these wheels facing towards you like so. You can then fold up the entire foot into that little gap or crevice, fold up the entire foot. You can then spin the figure around again. As you can see, there is a tab there and a slot right there. That's just going to tab into place like so. And of course, the same tab and slot connection with the other leg on the other side of the car. As you can see, there are several tabs on this side and corresponding slots on this side. So you can tab both the legs or both front halves of the car together. And then what you want to do is actually grab the entire chest, hinge this entire section up like so. How this is tabbed in place is there is a tab right there and a slot right there and just make sure this entire chest section is kind of aligned or sort of connecting with the entire backpack region of the figure. Now we can focus on the arms. So you're going to rotate at the bicep, rotate at the bicep. You can actually open up these small little panels that are on the form. As you can see there's a small little gap or crevice inside the form. You can actually fold the hand inside like so and you can repeat all those steps I just showed you with the other ones. So open up that panel, fold the hand inside, and then you're going to grab the entire form and pretty much kind of align it up and tab into the shoulder like so, and make sure that's kind of aligned and sort of like one solid piece. Do the same thing with the other side, just to make sure all this is kind of aligned and straightened up like so. You can actually grab the entire waist and untab it from the torso, and this entire section here will collapse. And you can sometimes need to have to move the arms around. It just really depends the order in which you transform this figure. But then you can just fold this entire section down. As you can see, there is two slots on the hood and tabs where that chest panel used to be and that will just tab into place like so. You can then grab what used to be the arm, use this entire hinge section here, hinge this back, and then hinge this entire section up. As you can see, there's this small little notch that's actually going to slide into place where the front wheel is. It's a pretty snug fit and things might come on tabs. So you do have to kind of mess with the figure quite a bit to make sure it's all straightened and aligned, but that should tab into place like so. And then you can go to the other side, repeat those same steps, hinge this entire section back, and then of course use that little tab or notch that will just slide into the front wheel. Again, it's kind of fiddly and pretty cramped at times. You just got to mess with the figure, kind of work with the figure. And unfortunately, on my copy of Bumblebee, these two tabs and slots here is not very secure. It comes untabbed quite a bit, as you can see. But then you're going to want to go to the back of the figure. You can grab this entire bumper section here, fold this back. There is a slot right there and a tab right there. As you can see, there is a tab on each side of the bumper. And there's actually slots on the inside of the rear wheels and that will just tab in a place like that. And let me just quickly straighten up the alt mode, make sure everything looks good, everything's tabbed into place properly. And that is pretty much it for transformation. Let's now take a look 
at the details. So here we have Bumblebee in his police car alt mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very front edge, like that nice glossy black for the entire front grille section there with the really nice bright silver for the front headlights. And if we do look at the top of the car, do you like that nice long stripe of glossy black going from the back to the front or the other way around with that really nice classic Autobot symbol done in red. And I do like that small little transparent piece of red plastic there for the siren on the top. Very classic, iconic trait of Bumblebee in the anime tv series and the wheels overall don't look too bad i do like that bright silver and the black with the really cool kind of indents in the tire to make it look a bit more realistic i think it rolls pretty well across pretty much any service and if you're wearing all four wheels i'm pretty sure our mushroom peg which is really no surprise there it's a deluxe and i do like these small details like the little mirrors and the door handle there and that really cool kind of race car fin at the back and in case you're wondering what the back looks like, overall pretty lean, uh, clean and put away. Not much kibble or anything ugly back there. And this is what the bottom looks like. And I think the windows overall don't look too bad. I do like that kind of smoky gray clear plastic uh, they chose, which I think probably should have been just a little bit more tinted or darker because you can actually see some pretty ugly hinges and some kind of internal stuff of the figure of like how it's made, like some screws and pins that does not look the greatest. So maybe a darker color would have been a good choice. But that is it for details. So now for accessory storage, you can actually store these combined weapons in one of two different ways so the first way is you can actually have it pointing forward like an actual weapon which this is probably my least favorite of the two ways but that's just my opinion anyway so if you do want him you know charging into battle attacking you know lug nuts or megatron or blitzwing you can do that but if you do want him running away from the enemy and maybe he's outnumbered you can actually attach them facing the other way on the back of the car and actually have him act as rocket boosters which this is definitely my preferred way to store them and of course the same way for the uh, exact same weapon on the other side and I think that looks really really cool one interesting kind of tolerance sort of mishap or problem I have on my copy at least is one of the rocket boosters or accessories is really tight but the other one it pops off all the time so I do apologize if that happens at some point in this section of the review of the alt I'm not really sure why that is but I think this looks really really cool in my opinion but that is it for accessory storage so now for some alt mode comparisons here he is with Magnus, another deluxe from Legacy United Wave 1, and his review is already up on the channel. Make sure you go check it out after this one if you haven't already. And as you can see, Bumblebee is a very small deluxe, as you saw, of course, with the comparisons in his robot mode earlier in the review. You can still see now he is a very small figure, but still a really good one. I think he looks really good next to Magnus. And now for one final comparison, here he is with somewhat of another police car, here he is with the Rescue Bot Chase, another deluxe from Legacy United Wave 1, and two pretty cool looking police cars. Here's another viewer angle of them, like that. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this alt mode, let's now get down to the final thoughts. So now for my final thoughts on the Transformers Legacy United Animated Universe Deluxe Class Bumblebee. So now that we have modern interpretations of animated Optimus Prime, Prowl, and Bumblebee, all we need are Bulkhead and Ratchet, and we will have completed the entire main Autobot cast of Transformers Animated Season 1. Starting in the room, I look the very cartoon accurate head sculpt with a small kid-like smirk on Bumblebee's face next to his iconic horns. I love his classic yellow and black color scheme with the small bits of silver detailing here here and there. I do think Hasbro overused the smoky gray plastic on this figure. There is some on the accessories and used for all the windows of the car, so it gets a bit repetitive. As for accessories, the figure includes two rocket pieces and two stinger pieces, which can combine and be stored on the robot and alt mode in several different ways. Articulation and tolerances are pretty good. My one complaint is one of the back leg panels tends to untap. Transformation is surprisingly unique and different for Deluxe, but still fun to transform the figure back and forth. As for Bumblebee's alt mode, I love the cute little cob car with the black and yellow striping and the nice silver paint apps at the front of the headlights, and there's some small bit of red paint apps for the police siren on the top. What do you think of this figure? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you next time.